for privacy. That's right. That's awesome. And you had a lot to do with that. Okay, so the next guest that I have is the co-founder of the Privacy Identity Innovation. So it was actually a, it's a conference that's yes. going on, which you agreed to do one more year, right? I, this is going to be more. the fifth year that I've done it. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Okay, and then also you are launching a new nonprofit, which we're about to hear about, which I'm really excited for. So everybody, please put your hands together for Natalie. Thank you for coming out. So I'm gonna start with talking about privacy because you, I mean, yes, you're probably like one of the most credible people in the country to talk to about this. And you wow. put all the big companies together into a room and you talk about digital data privacy. So give us a rundown of what you, what's your overall takeaways from all this work you've done. Yeah, so I started um, a conference called Tech Policy Summit actually and started working on it in 2006. The first conference happened in 2007. Looking at, as the name suggests, looking at all kinds of issues um, around uh, what's happening in DC and how it affects tech companies and consumers and did that for several years and the issue that interested me the most was privacy and um, so in 2009 I was ready to do another conference and wanted to focus on an issue in depth and we never really could do that at the policy summit because there were so many we were covering net neutrality and patent reform and copyright and all this stuff so launched PII um, and like I said this is going to be the fifth year that I've done it and okay. the, the focus that that I take is to um, really look at it from a business perspective, particularly for me startups, like my, my background is in editorial marketing at tech startups. And so looking at how um, businesses, particularly tech businesses, but really these days every company um, is in the tech business because it's all about personal information and data, right? right. I mean, it's no, you know right, energy yeah. companies, banks, banks it's, they're all tech companies in, in one way or the other. And so looking at how um, tech companies can build trust with their users and, and be responsible data stewards. And um, what I didn't realize at the time was how loaded the, the term privacy was and kind of how divisive and polarizing it can be. And um, so it kind of started as a conference and turned into a bit of a movement for me to to expand oh, right. the sure, conversation yeah. Yeah. And, and get people interested because right now for the most part um, the privacy conversation is being had um, by lawyers and it's it's really about compliance and just having a privacy policy and checking that box off and my perspective coming from a background in marketing is it's it's about a lot more it's about how you um, have a conversation with your users and about respecting the information that they entrust you with and and being able to um, you know, develop a, a relationship over time, right? So trust, just like in a personal relationship, takes time to build, but it can be really easy to lose it, <laughs> you know, if you, right. oh, you do course, the wrong yeah. thing. So, um, so I've been trying to kind of evangelize and get more people involved in the conversation. So for the conference, I actually reach out to, um, to entrepreneurs, to, to developers, to marketing people, in addition to the legal people. And um, it's, it's been an interesting road because okay, for a lot yeah. of people in, in the tech community, privacy is um, a topic that they are only talking about when they're in trouble, right? There's like a big media story yeah, that got yeah, busted right, right, right. because they did something. And so it's it's kind of a, a PR nightmare for some companies. Well, did you, okay, so like take, take Katie and Steve and Jen, like mm -hmm. for like community members, like real people that we know like in the community, like is their data, as long as they're as talking about the big companies like mm -hmm. Google and Microsoft stuff, does it feel safe? Like you feel like that they can go around and use those tools that they have without giving up too much information? Well, there's no doubt about the fact that um, there are a lot of companies, and, and Facebook and Google are some great examples, who have built incredibly lucrative businesses based on personal information. And um, if you have an account there, or you know whether it's, it's Gmail or um, you know, if you have a Facebook account, they're, they're getting information about you. Um, the question is, what's your comfort level with that? Um, you know, you can, which is, is different for everybody. I mean, you can obviously set your, your privacy settings to control the information that goes outside to other entities, but those companies know what you're doing on their sites. And, um, you know, if you're really uncomfortable with that, the only way to truly keep your information from it is to not use those services. <laughs> to not use those services. I mean, there's certain things you yeah. can do. Like I, I, I mean, I use everything. I'm a, a techie person. Um, you know, one thing that you you could do, for instance, with um, is be more uh, cautious about kind of logging out of services, right? So, so if you um, if you log in to to Gmail, you, you can log out to then go search. You know, online, and and there's also other products. So there's you know DuckDuckGo where you can where you can search 
um, yeah. and have privacy yeah. and then um, disconnect, which is disconnect.me. What do you think about technology you know, coming around actually, there? What do you think about technology say like coming around the corner? Like anything from like, uh, I don't know, facial recognition to like yeah. 23andMe or something well, like that? Well, we, so we've dealt with all of those at the conference and actually what I, what I try and look at is, is emerging technologies and what's coming next. I mean, there, a lot of the focus today is on, on you know, social networking and the stuff that's, that everyone's already using. But we, um, at the conference, I, I tried, like last year we looked at, um, at wearables. We had, two years ago, we had one of the co-founders of 23andMe um, at the conference, and then we've had a lot of conversations around facial recognition. And again, it's, it's um, first of all, it's happening, it's coming. There's, you know, yeah, no th there's really no stopping these things, but I'm it's, it's, not, for, it's yeah. not all that, right? And that's the thing, I mean, that's depending on who you talk to. So I'm a big, um, Walt Disney fan. I've got annual passes, and I actually have annual passes in both parks, and oh, good, you know, yeah. kind of ridiculous. And so, yeah. so, you know, go to Disney all the time. And, and Disney came out with this, um, you know, my my Magic Plus band that a wearable bracelet oh, right, right, right. for That's people right, in the yeah. park and it's stuff. A billion dollar and so, yeah. it's a huge thing, and there's yeah. a lot of implications because if you start, I mean, if you think of Disney and the number of people that go to Disney and and getting kids involved and in becoming comfortable with wearable technology, like they have the opportunity to to kind of push that into our consciousness in a way that right. other brands don't. You know, this is not Google Apps. This is, you know, a happy little bracelet that you can customize and they sell you different little, you know, bl bling items that you can put on and stuff. So I personally have been excited about using my Magic Plus, but within the privacy community, there's people who are, you know, super concerned about it. And I went to the, um, the forum, there's all kinds of Disney underground communities of crazy Disney fans, and I went to a forum to see what did what did other Disney pass holders think about this because it was rolled out to pass holders first, and 99% of the people there were were psyched, right? They have a totally different view. They mm. they love Disney, so they're happy. They look at the convenience they trust aspect. The company, yeah. They trust them, and they look at all the benefits that they're going to get, and so. On a personal level, privacy is about you know a lot of trade-offs that people make. I mean, one thing that so again I mentioned earlier that the term is is a problem. That, you know, I've come to realize because no one can really agree on what privacy means. And so, if you define privacy as the ability for you to keep information about yourself completely secret, that's definitely diminishing. But, you yeah. know, technology is 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 changing that. But the way that I um, think about privacy at the conference is really about the rules that we set up to. Um, to govern how we handle personal information, right? right? And, and from right. that perspective, it's a huge, huge issue for businesses. Every business should be thinking about it. It has you know, societal impact, and it's not dying. Like when people say privacy is dead, um, first of all, this conversation we've been having in, in the late 1800s when cameras were popular. Right, they're the camera. People you know, thought yeah, that, like that Kodak was going yeah. to you know, um, ruin the country. and, and you know, these are waves of, of technology. We our, our social norms change over time as we kind of adapt to to technology. But I think, um, from my perspective, my focus is really on what are the rules that we're going to set up to to understand how we're protecting personal information. And um, again, it's it's a business imperative. I'm okay. Going to so I, I could talk to you forever about it because I have a lot of thoughts, and I think that's really interesting. But I want to make sure we talk about your nonprofit yes. before we run out of time. So if you could throw that slide up. So this is um, your new new passion, right? Yes. Shelter Genius. So this is the landing page, which the, okay. the website I, I thought was going to be ready um, by this week, but it's, it's, <laughs> it'll be ready this month. So and this is the first time I'm talking to anyone. Um, All right, breaking outside. news. This is breaking news. Wow. This is the launch of that little podcast. So, breaking so, news. Yes. <laughs> Watch <laughs> out. Watch out, <laughs> CNN. So, so, yeah, so I, um, about three years ago, I, I mean, for reasons, you know, I can talk about later over the beer, you know, I kind of, um, became very clear to me that I wanted more in what I was doing, how I was spending my time, and um, I started you know, thinking like, what do I really care about? What was really matters to me? And I realized that I hadn't even asked myself that question in so long. I just had been doing what I was good at and what um, people expected me to do professionally. Like if you do a conference, people expect you're always gonna keep doing a conference. And you know, so I was kind of on, in this, just on this wheel and I was just going along and um, some stuff happened personally. There's a death in my family and it, it just kind of shook me up and I thought like, okay, what, what do I really wanna do? And I thought um, what I'm most passionate about is dogs. You know, helping dogs and I've been volunteering and giving money um, for years um, to different dog rescue organizations but 
as I start to get you know get into it, I guess coming from tech and, and just the way I thought, I'm like, okay, how can I help dogs at scale, right? Like I want to right. do this Helps, in, in yeah. a bigger way. And so um, I noticed that within, so just some kind of some facts about dog um, rescue and, and adoption in the United States. So there, there are over 83 million dogs in in homes in the United States. Only 20% of them um, come from pet shelters. Mm -hmm. And there are about, so the, the statistics here, so there, there are between six and eight million animals that go into the shelter system, and that's dogs and cats. I, I, they haven't, the, the numbers, there's actually a project I to get better numbers about this. And only half of them um, leave. So half of them are, are euthanized or killed. Um, and including a lot of healthy adoptable pets because of lack of space and stuff. And so one of the, the key um, ways in which more lives are saved is there's this network of over, there's over 3,500 animal shelters in the country, but there's over 13,000 rescue groups that, fo that focus on helping animals. And they, they take animals off the street, they take surrenders from owners who decide they're not capable of taking care of their pets anymore, and they take animals off the euthanasia list at the shelters. And these are, Again, with a few exceptions, I mean, they're, they're mostly volunteer run, they're local little organizations, some of them are, are quite sophisticated, but most of them are scrappy little things where you've got um, people who don't have any kind of background in running a website, you know, don't have a marketing background, don't even have a fundraising background, and they're saving, you know, tens of thousands of, of you know, dogs, or my focus dog slice every year, and I learned from volunteering directly with them, you know, that there there's just no kind of support system for right. those organizations. So there, there's there's support for shelters, but there's all these kind of small little organiza organizations. And so Shelter Genie is designed to kind of create a, a network, first of all, to kind of connect those rescue organizations and then help identify what their needs are. And I think of it as um, kind of a combination. Everyone has their like, it's like this story. Right, and so right, mine is it's like yeah. a combination between Make-A-Wish Foundation and Donors Choose. So, oh, totally so totally identifying the needs that the rescue groups have across the country and then working with corporate donors and sponsors to help meet some of the bigger needs, but then allowing anyone who wants to contribute to come to the website and grant a wish is the okay. way that I, I talk about it. So, um, awesome. so this is, yeah, this is the work that I will do for, for no okay. money. And you, you think, know, you think so this is, in the next month or so you'll have the, total, the website up and running? Yeah, I mean, People it's very, can go now it's and very close. So sheltergenie.org okay. right now um, and to sign up to be notified when it launches. Okay, and then you can also follow you on Twitter at Tech Policy. Tech Policy. Right, are you going to keep that Twitter handle? Yeah, I, that's, I've okay. had that since 2007, so it's not going anywhere. All right, well, it's time to grab your beer. Oh, actually, you know what? This is not true. We're going to grab beers in a second, but who wants to try to catch some t-shirts I throw at them? They're medium. Yeah! <laughs> Right? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Go long! Oh. <laughs>